prepared just to present a brief introduction about the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, about which we have taken a very detailed survey and which presents a very detailed picture of the happenings, the situation in all our surroundings. So, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan at IIT Kharagpur. See, in this year, Government of India has launched this plan and IIT Kharagpur has taken the initiative for the all-round development of villages so that they can cover all these villages. Now, what are the points which we are concentrating in this movement are the states of education, the level of sanitation and the income generation in all these surrounding areas around IIT Kharagpur. And IIT Kharagpur has all these key participants. First of all, there is our National Service Scheme NSS, which has been working in more than 20 villages for many years. It has a wide experience. It has a wide experience to work with many government agencies, and hence it has been given the pivotal role to take this survey. And regarding the development of villages near our IT Kharagpur, there are many other agencies. There are Rural Technology Action Group, RUTEC, which has developed many technologies to do this. And there is Rural and Development Center of our IT Kharagpur, not to mention. And there is Agriculture and Food Engineering Department, which has developed many research, many technologies, for example, the ready to eat, to check the malnutrition. So these are the brief things. Coming to today's why we are all here. See, today is our brainstorming session. We have to think and discuss what we can do to improve the lives of people in all the villages where we work. Actually, the experience of our NSS and other agencies like UTEC, RDC, and AGFE, they actually contribute in thinking in how we can improve it. This is our IT Kharagpur and all these areas nearby. The surprising thing is that most of the villages, they are very poor and have very less infrastructure. This survey has been taken in more than 1200 households, 20 villages and slums around IT Kharagpur, simultaneously on November 1st and 2nd. And the most important fact about is that almost 100% households have been covered in many villages. That's a excellent benchmark. About the key findings, now there is the information about which we have to think what is the current situation and how we can improve it. The first one indication is anybody can think of it that how much a person a family earns. This graph tells the annual average annual income per person in all these villages. As you can see, on an average, it is around less than 60 to 70 percent. And in many villages, as you can see, it is crossing, it is much less than 5,000. In West Bengal, the average income is around some 50 to 60,000. But here, it is around 20,000 in two or three villages only. But in many villages, it is much less than 5,000, as you can see in some villages. So, it is a very less income level, as you can see. There is very less income everywhere. Now, I would like to invite my friend to continue with the slides. Good afternoon. My name is Neha Banerjee. I am from 1st year Industrial Engineering Department. I am here to speak upon the next two important findings out of this Unna Bharat Abhiyan scheme. Uh, first of all, I would like to point out uh, the predominance of non-engineered houses in the villages. Well, as from my personal experience, I can share that most of the villages, uh, in, in the villages uh, which our unit has covered, most of the villages, their roofs were made up of tin, uh, or maybe in most of the cases, they were made up of thatch, thatch or mud. So, as you can see that most of the houses are non-engineered. Uh, they can collapse any time. The villagers face a lot of problems, especially during the rainy season, uh, but still they don't have any uh, adequate solution to this problem. 
so my request would be that you are here, you are IITians, you are here to suggest a solution to this problem that how we can build engineer houses that also in a very uh, profitable manner, in a very beneficial manner. So please think about that issue because just after this session uh, we are going to uh, take up your suggestions. Uh, uh, please come to the next slide. Uh, let us come to the next uh, key finding. Uh, this talks about the lack of access to an engineer toilet. Now this is a very uh, serious problem, this is really a very serious issue. Uh, as you can see that uh, in one of the villages, like in Gonga Thorpur, there are absolutely nil engineer toilets. So just imagine how people of that village manage. And this can lead to very serious diseases, uh, and this can really lead to hazardous conditions. So this is really, a thing, really an issue which we have to think about. Uh, this is also a very uh, important point which you should think about right now and you should suggest us very enthusiastically when we introduce the brainstorming session. Uh, now my friend will speak upon the next two topics. Okay, after this we'd like to draw your attention to something related to like the villagers, uh, the fuel which they use for cooking their food. We see that wood predominates. In a few places, it's almost 100%. Now you'd say, what's the problem with firewood? Uh, firstly, uh, the females uh, are chronically exposed to smoke, which uh, significantly reduces the female life expectancy in these villages. Secondly, the children are sent to collect the firewood, which usually means that they're missing out on school. So we are having two lots because of using this firewood. I'd like to have few suggestions on what would be alternate sources of fuels for these places so that their lifestyles can be improved. Moving on to the next thing. Okay, the next thing is literacy rate. Uh, the, our finding was that it's quite comparable to the national and state averages, but the one thing we found was that there was there's an exponential drop uh, in the number of people, uh, in the fraction of people, as we move from the 12th level to the graduate or some technical degree, which means that people usually stop studying after 12th. Uh, I'd like you to think about those reasons and uh, the, uh, the problem when we, uh, what we have when people don't have technical or undergraduate education is that uh, they can't go into very uh, high paying jobs, uh, not in high paying, they can't sustain themselves, it's just labor oriented jobs which they can focus on. If in some way we are able to get them to educate themselves more, uh, they'll be able to do even more uh, jobs for themselves. Uh, that's all our findings from these surveys and uh, we'd like you to think on them and give us a few suggestions about what could be possible initiatives on part of NSS IIT Kadapur, something uh, uh, possible uh, so that we can improve their lifestyle. Uh, all is in your food now, please think. Uh, director, we'd like to call for to uh, please, please question. First of all, uh, you have to stay here at night as well. So, uh, what do you do? You come here in the morning and go back in the evening. And you have your lunch here. So, how many of you participated in this survey? Great. So, thank you. You know, uh, our objective is for us to have not just a one-off uh, event but a sustained action plan which can be carried over by you, carried out by you and then subsequently carried over to the future generations and some of you can continue to take it over so that we really bring about a transformation. And we have chosen, as you can see, some 12 to 13 to 15 villages. And if you look at some of the numbers that were posted here, then some of the annual income of some of the families of four to six people is less than twice your individual two months respite. So you can imagine their lifestyle and the way they live and they are the power of the country. So it is an opportunity for us rather than a feeling of doing something for somebody else. It is an opportunity for us to try and make a difference so that you know we can do it in a very sustained, 
scientific manner so that it brings about real progress. Now, we have to now debate and think, given these baseline figures that we have got, what are the initiatives that we should take in the long, short and medium terms to bring about this change? Among the long-term measures, I think education is the most important measure. It is a measure that all of us can actually support in some way or the other and make sure that the next generation of people get quality education and once one generation is educated and eventually employed, then immediately the whole place will transform by itself. So we must think of plans for doing some long-term measures like education. On the other hand, we must also look for some real short-term measures, measures which can bring about tangible change because whatever we try to do with them, Hundreds of people come to them praying that we want to do something for you. Therefore, they are always suspect of people with ill intentions. So whatever we do, we must be able to bring about change, which makes a difference. And then, what is the short-term measures that we can take is something that we have to work out. Another important aspect other than health and sanitation which we have to see about what we can do more about that. A more important aspect is how we can leverage technology and modern technology to improve their lifestyles. For example, there are new ways of developing cookers using firewood and other things which actually are smokeless, which actually are also going to additionally absorb the excess heat and use that to produce power. So the technologies where people have designed stoves which can be used not only for cooking with less fuel, with less you know, leaves and firewood, but it is also very interestingly connected to a sensor which attracts the heat and uses that to generate power which lights up two or three LEDs so while they are cooking the house is also lit. So there are examples of technologies which are available and we have to work with other groups and other people to bring these technologies and see. Now putting a technology on the ground is not so easy. So. This is one example which I have given you. We have to figure out several other examples in order to convert this into a, a better uh, place. So about their housing, about their sanitation, we also have to draw plans so that the future is more made more and more concrete. I have already contacted several of our alumni who will connect us with programs and funding to engage in this activity. There are alumni who run programs both in India and in the US which will help us connect with and develop and bring in their programs along with their funding into this. But the ownership, the planning and everything has to be ours. Therefore, I would request all of you along with the coordinators here to try and figure out what are the available technologies that are developed at IIT Kharagpur and may, many of you may be made aware very soon that we really have a lot of technologies both developed in our agriculture department, the Lutex Center, RTC and other places which can be deployed here gainfully to improve their income, employability and various other activities. So how do we plan this out? How do we do it systematically? And how do we measure every six months 
what happens to this baseline. So we must target that this baseline that we have seen, we must now see in the next 6 months, 12 months, 24 months, what are the figures that we want to change. And if we want to change these figures to that level, what are the action items that we have to do? And then we will break out into groups, form these action plans, and then start implementing it over a period of time. So that is the objective. And with this, uh, I would request you know the other members if they want to have anything else to say on this. And then we can uh, start thinking. Today is just a session I thought that I would have with all of you while you all are here and have more detailed discussions about what we will do. Uh, so I'll leave it here and leave it open for discussion.